Hey everyone, this is Gavin and Mark. Hey, we're coming at you from Fe uh, our Fanboy TV South by Southwest Live 2019. This is what our seventh year doing this, having a lot of fun. Seventh, seventieth. Yeah, we've been here a long time. Seventieth year. This is a group that brings us one of some of the best films. We love them. Um, Thank you back there, Tiffany, thank you, and Sylvia. So we are today with a very interesting movie, so let's introduce our guests. Tell everyone who you guys are. How you doing? Uh, my name is Andrew Havia. And I am Carlos Rivera. And our movie is called Leave the Bus Through the Broken Window. Now, <laughs> which one of you was wearing the camera? Oh, I was, I was the guy. So you're running around. Are you sure you're not an android? Because <laughs> the whole thing is narrated by, like... A computer voice <laughs> and so I thought the whole time I was following a robot trying to figure out what to do in Hong Kong let me tell you uh, that's not an incorrect interpretation <laughs> not of, at all huh? the film it so be that too. where did the idea for this come from because this is one of those ones that you can't really describe it's like hardcore Henry but for someone who's just lost and confused <laughs> in Hong Kong like for real <laughs> um, that's a great reference. Okay, so the story was that I moved to, I moved to Hong Kong uh, on a grant to make a documentary about an art fair. And almost immediately after arriving, realizing, uh, realized I was totally unprepared to make that documentary mm -hmm. and um, instead made this one, which is a movie about my feelings uh, and the time I got lost in a shopping mall. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny because you guys talked about shopping malls a lot, but there's never anybody in these shopping malls. They're like near ghost towns. And I was thinking, is it because they have one on every corner or what? Like, oh, let me tell real. you, they have a lot of shopping malls. Are there the same stores in every shopping mall? Mostly high-end luxury. That's just bizarre. Okay, so you move to Hong Kong and you get lost in the mall. What happens then? Well, ultimately, I mean, so I, when I realized that I can't make the movie that I thought I would make, uh -huh. uh, I started to ask myself questions about, like, well, what movie can I make given the disaster I've made of this? And uh, started to ask the real question was, why did I come here in the first place? And not, like, what was my objective? What motivated me to move to the far side of the world into a room the size of a closet? Um, what was I running away from? And that became sort of the, the motivation of ultimately the movie. Uh, <laughs> no, definitely. Um, the, we have hot mics. This, Sorry, I forgot. Uh, so coming up with the structure of the film, to put it together, doing what you, like you said, you, you had first come in to do a documentary on, on the, the art exhibits. But uh, wow, they went way low here. <laughs> All right. That so I'm dropping. I, we can yeah, compete. You can compete. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks, Robin. Get out there. So, um, in how long did it take to, uh, was, or was there, there was there a time when you say, okay, I've got this. This is the structure. So, I'm going so this is maybe my favorite. Uh, my favorite story. So, Carlos and I had um, have known each other for 15 years, and when I had gone to Hong Kong to make this movie, he was like, listen, I want to, like, let me know. I, I think this is a cool idea, and. While I'm over there, I'm like, Carlos, you don't understand. I'm going to go. I'm going to shoot this movie. It's going to be too... I don't need a partner. Um, I come back from Hong Kong with an assembly of the movie, what I think is a finished cut, because I'd been editing. And I show it to a very small group of friends, and Carlos is one of them. And he sees it, and he says, listen, I like what you're trying to do, <laughs> but let, let me have it for a weekend. Let me see if I can, if I can, if I can add something to this. Two and a half years you. later, <laughs> two and a half years later, we have a movie that we think is good enough to submit to South by Southwest. How different from it was it from your original version? He's like, oh man, let me tell you, everything's gone on the floor. No, I I'd say, I'd say there's probably like only the when he arrives in Hong Kong and you get the backstory is probably the one scene that is largely intact from the original cut of the film. The context and the structure, the rest of it is all entirely different. What, yeah, what I'd say is so, it's a radically different movie, but it has the exact same core. So working together, putting this together, having your, your original vision of it, and then yours, and then combining it, what, what was that like, uh, these, two, these two different people coming together to form this? Was there any head-butting? There, was there, what, 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 what so was the, like? the way I, the way I've described the way we worked is that Carlos was, um, was part editor, part therapist. Because a lot of it would be, like, we'd have a scene and he'd say, okay, so what was going on here? Like, what was, what was happening? 
Uh, and I'd be like, oh, this is really about the moment where I got lost in the thing and I felt really embarrassed. Go, okay, so that's not in this. You need to go put that in there. <laughs> so the reason the film became a personal story of me in Hong Kong was because Carlos uh, helped me shape that. A lot of it was about finding the moments that were personal, the moments in the movie that that the tendency is to cut out, yeah. to impression manage. Like, well, I don't want to show the part where this happened. It's kind of embarrassing. He goes, no, that's the point. <laughs> Was there anything that you had to cut out that, you now sometimes you have to kill your babies, right? So, and, uh, and sometimes you have to when you're to come up with, uh, with a film that you, know, you need to make. And that's part of the process. And was there any part of it that, whether uh, for, from Carlos's, uh, uh, from his advice or from, was there something where he said, okay, I, there's something and I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah, I so, so I think the, there was, one, there was one moment in the film where I got invited because I was, after a certain period of time, I was known as the guy who was wandering around art events with this camera. So someone said, hey, we're having a party. It's an underground party. We're going to have a performance, and the musician needs someone to record it. Can you be that guy? And I got invited to this party that felt like like a, like a real speakeasy. Like you had to knock Noah guy and so it's like slide the door open. What's the password? I yeah, got a camera. Yeah, and I was like, uh, Ming Wong invited me. And they were like, Oh, come on in. And I got to meet. And I, I got invited backstage. And I recorded this this underground performance that was spectacular, um, and just had such a strong, cool vibe. But didn't f it didn't fit. I mean, ultimately, you're condensing ten months of filming mm -hmm. into a watchable movie, uh, seventy minutes. So. Yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of them. This is the one that, that sticks with me. Okay, so our last question. What's up with the creepy robot voice? Uh, I had originally, when I started working on this, I was under the assumption that we would replace it and that it was temp because it was easier to just be able to write and drop in the voice. And then as we got along, it grows on you and you love it and then you start working around the voice and the voice helps you shape, she shape scenes and moments and you can play off... Yeah, there, there are things the robot can communicate. Uh, I mean, one, I would, I would object to creepy because this is the voice of my soul. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe not so creepy. <laughs> but, but the, I mean, the fun part of this was learning to speak robot because in order to get her to pronounce you know, words in the right way, have the right timing, like there's a sense of humor that comes from, from that uh, presentation that really felt... Uh, authentic in, in a weird way like by being so artificial it came back around um, and I would say that part of that came from when you go to when I went to Hong Kong and I went to the far side of the world where I knew literally no one and had to find my feet again Hong Kong is familiar enough as a city that um, it's not that unfamiliar you know if you've been to New York you've been to Hong Kong you've been to San Francisco you've been to Hong Kong but it's the little things it's the fact that you have to check and make sure you're not looking the wrong way when you cross the street you have to make sure that the things you take for granted because you live in this country uh, versus that one um, those are where you feel destabilized and it's a small shift but it is profound when you realize you can get lost in a shopping mall Everything's in English. All the signs are clear. They had an animated map, and I still got lost. So how do you show that subtle disorientation? And that, that robot voice allowed us to, to like, it's not, something's off here. What is wrong? <laughs> True. So I guess that means you're never going to be going back to Hong Kong. Oh, like, I love it. I have been back several so times. There's going to be a sequel. This time I'm going to jump through the broken window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the goal is not break the window in the first place. That's. <laughs> I'd still break it. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks. This has been... Andrew, Andrew Hevia, Carlos Rivera, leave the bus. From don't from leave the bus through the broken window, and stay tuned because we're gonna have more interviews. And this was a very interesting, interesting movie. If you're down at South by, when's the last time they can watch this? The last time, well, the first time is tonight. The second time is uh, Sunday afternoon, and then the third time is Wednesday. Yeah, uh, so you have all week to watch it. Go watch it, and you know maybe your Google will love you because it'll be like, I want to go to Hong Kong.